With the announcement came for the Los Santos Summer Special DLC, we all know we had to brace ourselves for impending doom in terms of how little there was going to be in terms of content. But when the DLC came out, I was actually pleasantly surprised. But was it enough to keep us busy until December? Let's discuss. We should start off by saying what was actually added. There was a total of 15 new vehicles, 6 new co-op missions, 6 new open wheel races, plus the open wheel race creator itself, 2 new business battles, and 8 new adversary modes in the casino. One of the biggest surprises for me was to see Benny's finally getting some love again after 4 years of being forgotten about. Being able to see the Manana and the Peyote getting so much little love, for example, was a very welcome tradition. And it doesn't even scratch the surface of how much customization options there are once again for all the six new vehicles that Rockstar has added to Benny's again. On top of that, we also had a couple of very nice additions to the game, like the Coquette D10, the Club, and the Penumbra FF. I've especially enjoyed the Club, and while it does completely destroy the Compax class again, it is a lot of fun to drive. The variation in vehicles is definitely the highlight of this DLC. There's really something for everyone, and I hope that Rockstar will continue to do this in the DLCs to come. Another big surprise to me was that they decided to not have any drift feed this time around. It's these 15 vehicles, and that's it. Personally, I never really minded drift feed too much, and it gave a reason to come back to the game every week and have a new toy to play around with. But I might be a little bit biased on that one as I enjoy doing races with the new vehicle every week on my Twitch streams. Which is what we also did with all these new cars. And it's definitely the most fun I've had in a while in GTA Online. Primarily because they were all fun to drive and everyone was using the same car. The call missions were surprisingly cool as well. While they're not worth the $6 million price tag, they're definitely worth a play if you happen to have a yacht or have a friend who can host them for you. One of the highlights definitely was during the Chula mission. If you played it, you'll know what I mean. Add the fact that the DLC has also some new cool outfits to unlock, and you've got yourself plenty of stuff to go for again. Especially when you have to rely on RNG for the last three collectibles. Bit of a shame on that one. The two new F1 cars and the nine new tracks are also a welcome addition. Especially the BR8 is a lot of fun to drive and quickly became my new favorite. The tracks, however, I'm not really sold on. The primary reason is because they seem to follow the same formula as the previous ones. Try to get as many corners in there and make people feel the true power of these machines. There are a few exceptions to the rule, but most of them just seem to focus on giving you as many corners as possible. Luckily, players can now make their own open wheel races, so I'm looking forward to see what they'll come up with. Having played a regular race with F1 cars that was kind of suited for them, I could really tell that with a better track, these cars will immediately provide a more unique racing experience than on the Rockstar created tracks. Having said this, the quality of life updates that they have done to the open wheel races by adding new UI features as well as the anti-griefer tool where players who will drive in the opposite direction will get ghosted is a very welcome change. I just really, really wish they would implement this in other races too, even if it was an option in the menu. It will make public lobbies just a lot more bearable and I know there's not a lot of people out there who have like a community where they can host races with. So for that reason, it would be a perfect addition to public lobbies and it will make everyone's enjoyment just so much better for those who still frequently play races. So here's hoping that this was just a test on a somewhat small scale and they will push this out to other race modes in the next DLC. Because we all really, really, really hate that tiny, <laughs> stupid, <laughs> little, who always ruins the races. One of the things that I feel that people are not talking about enough with the release of the two business battles is how Rockstar is basically telling us is that they're finding new ways to expand free mode even more. The addition of the aircraft carrier is highly likely to be a test of what they can do to make the game feel more dynamic. Sure, it's been in the game since the heist came out, but you cannot tell me that the moment you make your way to it, you don't feel a little bit hyped from seeing it in free mode. Sure, it only lasts 30 minutes, but I personally am viewing this from a future opportunity kind of way. Especially since they added the dynamic drug events to the game now too, it helps make free mode feel more alive and interesting. And with the new location that they've teased, who knows what Rockstar got up their sleeves. 
Having said this, I feel that having even more dynamic events and even more stuff in free mode does make it even more cluttered. And I really think that having mentioned this in previous videos where I did some discussions about this, is it just really should start either rotating or finding a way to keep it at least usable because having even more dynamic events into the game might make the game explode at some point. But nonetheless, it's a welcome addition. And if it doesn't explode the game and just keeps the game in a stable manner, I'm totally fine with it. I do hope though that there won't be more adversary modes in the casino because oh my, this was probably a good idea in concept, but the casino is definitely not made for PVP modes. There's no flow, there is way too much twist and turns and I honestly don't think they should have bothered with it. Especially Entourage, because oh my, why is this a thing? The attackers have knives, while the defenders have an entire arsenal of weapons. Even RPGs. There's simply no way that attackers will win this without constantly being thrown against the defenders like it's Russia in 1941. So was it worth the 8 month wait? Objectively, no. But considering all the factors of the forbidden word on YouTube and the fact the original plan of the Cops and Crooks DLC has been put aside because of other words I shouldn't say on YouTube, I think we can all be pleasantly surprised at what we ended up with. Sure, it's a filler DLC and it's very much a bunch of scrambled together stuff, but for a DLC that likely had about two months of development time, I feel we could have gotten something a whole lot worse than what we actually got. And now we play the waiting game for the big one in December. Because rumor has it, it's going to be quite the bombshell. But of course, I would love to know what you think. Were you pleasantly surprised or were you one of those people who was expecting the heist because you were misinformed by YouTubers who don't know how to read? Let me know in those comments down below. But with all that said and with all that done, that was it for this one. Thank you all so very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later. Why is there an RP? Look, look at the arsenal. <laughs> look at the arsenal. The, this, we get an RPG, an assault shotgun, a flare gun, a Mark II with a centimeter rounds, and a special carbine. And what does the other team get? Eh, you know. How about, uh, I don't know, a knife. Yeah, how about a knife? Good idea. Let's give him a knife. That will do.